to see all of you here. Uh, have you heard anything about Mexico before? Partially, no. <laughs> Partially? No, no, no experience in it. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, let me um, uh, introduce my presentation. It's in memory database MemSQL, and uh, I would like to describe when and how to use it with Drupal. I, I'm Evgeny Nikitin. I work at French company Smile on the Drupal team lead position. So, uh, when we are talking about in-memory databases, our expectation is that disks aren't used at all. Uh, data can be lost after several reboot, and it has to be work super fast. It's all our expectations. But the reality is a little bit different. Actually, data is stored on the disk, and these databases respect ACID. Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, these databases can keep data in memory. These systems are built as distributed systems. In memory databases leverage SSD, so no random writes. It, it uses all features of SSD drives. MDB is a new trend. As memory became cheaper, cache, for now, it's a new RAM. RAM is a new disk, and disk is a, a new tape. But there are still bottlenecks. If uh, when we are talking about all databases, uh, bottlenecks are disks, but uh, for in memory databases, bottlenecks are in the different places. So let me introduce MemSQL. It's a database of the new era. Uh, it can be run everywhere, on premises and containers, on cloud. MemSQL provides cloud storage, Helios. It can uh, store all data as you need. It supports gay spatial, JSON, k-value storage. Uh, you, can, you can load data from lots of sources. And uh, it uh, should really work with uh, new in our new model world. So, a uh, few words about MemSQL architecture. Uh, as I said before, uh, it uses distribute uh, in-memory databases a uh, distributed system. So, uh, Aggregators and leaves are used. So aggregator is used to store information about leaves, and the leaves are used to store data. As you can imagine, uh, there aren't servers in uh, in our reality that can store more than a few hundred gigabytes of uh, data in RAM. So when you want to store terabytes of data in RAM, you have to have lots of servers. And for it, we need leaves. Uh, how it works? For example, for in the operation, we send data to aggregator. Aggregator calculates hash value based on primary key or shard key, and then based on this value, it stores information on the sum leaf. When we read, we send data to aggregator. Aggregator takes uh, information from leaves, then it combines this data and then returns to the client. MemSQL provides uh, 
special tool, MemSQL Studio, where you can see health of your cluster. There are all aggregators, all leaves, and you can monitor how it works. Uh, all resources that are used by this by your cluster. So um, everything with a glance. Uh, when we are talking about in memory, we want not to lose any data. And let's have a look on the picture how transaction works in this database. So uh, all transactions are written in memory. And then these transactions are pushed to the transaction, tra tra transaction buffer. When transaction buffer is full, it is saved to the disk. And then um, it can be uh, stored to the database snapshot. So uh, you can define, should your system be fully durable or not? So transaction buffer can be increased or set as zero. If it will be set as zero, it means that transaction buffer won't be used at all and all data will be saved to the disk right after transaction has been received. Or you can uh, use big transaction buffer. Um, yes, performance can be better, but you can lose uh, latest transactions. So need to choose pros and cons of uh, these uh, decisions. It depends on your application. Um, in the modern world, uh, all databases can be split on two big different types. First type is operational databases, and they are used for operations accounting. And they use raw store tables. It's well-known databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, MSSQL, so every, all databases that we usually use in the Drupal world. And um, another big type of databases are analytical databases. It's databases of new, um, of new era, because for now we have lots of data around, uh, around us uh, that we haven't had before. And uh, we need new way how to store data. So uh, analytical databases use column store tables. So uh, let's have a look what is the difference between row store tables and column store tables in MemSQL. Actually, MemSQL can work with uh, both tables and actually in the same time in the same database. So some of tables can uh, be in row store, some tables can be in column store. So row store, uh, in this case, data is stored on the disk, but then they are loaded to the RAM when it is read from by client. But uh, it needs longer recovery times because uh, all data is loaded from the disk to the memory. Uh, so we need to wait some time when all data will be read from the disk. It's very well optimized to update it frequent. Uh, it's optimized to be updated frequently and at random. It uh, searches fast arbitrary data and uh, support any. Um, as many indexes as you want. Data is stored as is, and uh, uh, actually more space is needed for storage than source data. So for example, if you will um, compare CSV file and um, snapshot file, you will see that snapshot file for the table will be much more bigger than CSV file. And uh, MemSQL by default use row store tables. What are about column store? Column store is stored on the disk and data is read from the disk. Data is ready right after database start. It's optimized for batch update and delete queries. Works effectively with reading of big amount of consistent data. Uh, but um, it has a limitation in the MemSQL. It supports one index per table only. Uh, what is great is that data is compressed there and uh, less amount of storage is needed than source data, especially with pre-sorting. 
uh, it's great because uh, when you have a uh, few terabytes of data and it can be compressed, you uh, will see advantages of this solution. Uh, and it, it's very simple to define column store table. You need just to specify a special key, clustered column store. So, should I pay for my MemSQL? Um, actually, MemSQL is a commercial database, uh, and they use special term unit. It's eight uh, core CPU and 30, 32 gigabytes of RAM. And up to four units can be used for free. Actually, uh, lots of applications uh, can use it because you can store about 128 gigabytes uh, for free. It's more than enough for lots of applications. So, uh, actually, uh, I have heard lots of things from uh, MemSQL company that it's super fast, it's super great, but then I have found information that it isn't. <laughs> yes, and I have decided to check myself whether it's really good or not. So I have uh, built a testing platform and I have, take, um, I have taken my SQL 5.7 that is used for Drupal and latest version of main SQL. Uh, seven different types of tables uh, were used to row store and com store, and uh, all aspects of working with databases have been covered. All measure measurements have been done in milliseconds. So, uh, first day test it's loading data from the CSV file. Uh, as a source, I have taken uh, one million. Lions CSV file, it uh, weighs about 1.5 gigabytes. And we see that uh, MemSQL works much more faster here, in six times faster. Uh, actually, it was uh, impressed uh, when I started testing. Uh, second tests are about reading data. So uh, I have taken uh, four data sets. It's 11 million rows, 1 million row, 50,000 and 1,000 rows. Uh, differences were uh, in row store tables. Uh, I have uh, tried to understand whether indexes can help uh, this databases. So some tests have been made with uh, indexes on some columns and uh, without indexes. So, the first test is search by primary key. And surprisingly, MySQL works faster on all data sets. It, it was a surprise for me. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, okay, let's have a look. Next text. So next test, search by parameters. Um, for you, I have prepared uh, graphics for biggest data sets and smallest, because it's uh, most uh, visible differences between use cases. So on the big data set, MemSQL wins in few times than MySQL. But if you have just uh, 1,000 rows in the table, MySQL wins. And search by range, uh, absolutely the same situation. On the big data set, MemSQL works faster. On the small data set, MySQL works faster. And actually it was for, for many of tests, not, of, not for all, but for many. Uh, we see that MemSQL works, works in a few times faster if data set is big. And vice versa with MySQL, uh, where, where it's uh, more performant on the small <coughs> data sets. Um, so, actually it's... Uh, yeah, uh, interesting use case. Uh, using a small limit. It's uh, limit by 100. And we see that MySQL uh, wins in both cases here. 
But if we take big limit, uh, my SQL loses. It can do nothing, actually. MemSQL works much more faster on the big data set. And uh, inner joins, uh, the same situation. MemSQL wins on the big data set. So, uh, next tests were uh, about updating data. First test, it is uh, update data consistently. Um, 10,000 rows have been updated. And uh, when, we, uh, when I ran this test first time, I saw that MemSQL row store update data uh, faster than in other cases. Uh, you can solve that MemSQL column store update data uh, very slowly. Uh, but actually we know from theory that it isn't suited for, for this use case. Uh, for the second run, uh, all primary keys in MySQL have been indexed and uh, it wins. So uh, we in in this test and from previous tests, we see that if primary key is used in the key, uh, in the query, then MySQL uh, works better. It's very well optimized for queries with primary key. Uh, next uh, case, it's update data using range. And actually, uh, I think MySQL and MemSQL row store uh, showed about the same value, the same result. Uh, adding data. Uh, actually, inserting of 10,000 rows uh, works faster in MemSQL. And uh, insert data by big chunks. Uh, actually, there is no big difference. Actually, it's just 10 tra transactions. So, conclusion. I have found that performance of MemSQL and MySQL highly depends on the size of tables and the usage of primary keys and requests. So, scope of application of these ta databases. Tables up to a thousand rows, it's definitely uh, MySQL. Uh, tables with more than 100 rows with frequent updates, MemSQL row store and tables with more than a dozen million of rows with rare updates, I would prefer MemSQL column store. Actually, um, why I wouldn't suggest to use um, MemSQL for the uh, small data set, uh, because uh, MemSQL requires um, better, better servers with uh, more resources. So sometimes it can be, uh, it costs more money, uh, but it won't uh, give you uh, any advantages. But uh, we work with Drupal, and Drupal is a quite comp uh, complex system. And actually it uh, was written by smart people. And Drupal um, very well work with uh, MySQL, uh, it uses all advantages of MySQL. Uh, if, you, if you will uh, have a look on the screen, you will see common queries in Drupal. And all queries use primary key. Yeah. So, uh, next test uh, was, uh, it's uh, a Drupal site uh, where I uh, need to show just uh, 10 pages. And I have used three data sets. It's just 50 nodes, 50,000 nodes, and 500,000 nodes. And uh, actually, there isn't big differences. And uh, if you just store uh, content and show this content occasionally, uh, I would say there isn't a big difference between MemSQL and MySQL, especially um, when data is cached. It's uh, about the same values. So 
Uh, for content storing, I would say that uh, using cache mechanisms uh, like uh, internal page cache, uh, varnish, uh, will work more effectively than uh, using memsql. But from the previous test, uh, we saw that uh, memsql works really great on the big amount of data where we need to calculate uh, where we need to do some calculations with data. So, when MemSQL should be used with Drupal, it's definitely real-time analytics platforms. Different type of dashboards, uh, systems with search by parameters, like search by hotels, by planes, etc. And systems with frequently updated data, when we need to store, the, uh, save data fast and get data fast. It uh, can be some IoT systems. So, uh, if you would like to use or test MemSQL, you need to install it. Um, it's system requirements. As I said, you need at least four core CPU server with eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, TCP ports, those TCP ports have to be uh, should be open. As you see, it works on the same port as MySQL. And actually, if you would like to use MemSQL and MySQL uh, at once on the one server, I would uh, suggest set another port for MySQL. It's simpler. And uh, installation guide is well described on the mems memsql.com site. Uh, second interesting question is client software for MemSQL. Actually, uh, MemSQL is protocol compatible with MySQL. What does it mean? It means that uh, MemSQL uh, says to the uh, software clients that they work with MySQL. So, uh, clients have no idea that they work not from not with MySQL but with MemSQL. So you can use any database management applications as you want. For example, I use uh, SQL Pro on the Mac. And uh, you can use the same P PHP drivers as we use with MySQL. So it's a uh, very familiar uh, stack uh, that we used before. So in the LAMP stack, uh, MySQL can be changed on MemSQL without problems. Then uh, need to install MemSQL Drupal driver. Uh, there is module for it, uh, MemSQL. So uh, it can be installed using, using Composer. Uh, current version is Alpha 1. <laughs> yes, uh, actually I wouldn't suggest to use it on production, but it's ready for testing. Uh, you can jump uh, to the project and uh, help me with uh, issues. Then, after installation, um, we need to copy driver to the root, the root folder. Uh, this uh, folder is a specific folder that is used by Drupal to find um, custom database drivers. Uh, if you don't want to do it every time when model is updated, um, this command can be added to the post-update section in the Composer JSON file. So after um, modules update, it will be updated automatically. Uh, if everything has been done correctly uh, during site installation, you will see MemSQL uh, option in the data, on the database configuration page and you can fill all uh, credentials. Or you can define uh, credentials in the settings PHP file, and you can install site using Drush or as you want. What you definitely have to know when you start to work with MemSQL, it's a uh, difference between MemSQL and MySQL from a uh, development perspective. It's uh, first difference, it's a shard key. 
uh, shared key, uh, MemSQL requires shared key or primary key is, uh, is used by default if shared key is then defined. Uh, this key is used uh, to for hash calculation to define on which leaf it has to be stored. Then uh, primary or unique index must be identical to or a superset of the shared key. So it's uh, obligation of MemSQL. And default order. My SQL sorts data by primary key by default. But actually, SQL standard uh, doesn't guarantee such behavior. And uh, MemSQL can return data in any order. So if it's important for you uh, to show result in specific order, it uh, need to define this order specifically in the, in the query. Actually, that's all. <laughs> I was a little bit faster. Any questions? Yes, yes please. The, um, so the free, the free version allows you to use a four node cluster, is that correct? Um, actually, uh, it can be uh, four different servers, four nodes, okay. or it can be one server with uh, lots of resources. Mm -hmm. It's uh, up to you how to so use it. How, how, um, how long can you use it for until you actually have to use a paid version, I mean, in, in, in your experience, um, in, in terms of, you know, uh, when will it actually, um, when, when will you actually go over capacity um, until we actually have to to you know upgrade to to full version and, and use other nodes. Uh, there is MemSQL portal and uh, where you have to register and um, there you should uh, register your application and take a license key. Mm. Okay. Okay. I mean, I was just I was just wondering whether you know you can actually like set up a Drupal site and and. Um, and actually have a, a, a production site with the free version, um, or if that's just sort of for you to experiment and um, and for you to actually use it in production, you'd have, you'd actually have to use a um, you know, if if there'd be if if it would be capable of running a, a production site. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, it depends on on you know the amount of code and whatever. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, for now, I have prepared just proof of concept yeah. uh, of uh, some uh, applications, yeah. and it works. It really works uh, fine. Um, so I run tests uh, using um, alpha version of Drupal driver. Um, it isn't ready, so need to uh, fix a uh, few issues because for now Drupal core tests aren't passed uh, fully. Uh, but I think uh, I will be able to finish it uh, in a few months and it will be ready. Actually, 128 gigabytes of uh, data is uh, quite a lot. And, yeah. uh, for my needs, it's uh, more than enough. Okay. So just so I, I saw some of your tests there, and there were, there were like fifty nodes. Um, yeah, yeah. I have started with fifty nodes because uh, it was a question: uh, Should I use uh, MemSQL for, for example, simple blocks or not? And actually, I decided that uh, it has no sense because you have to pay for. Um, for the server with lots of resources, but instead of it, I would uh, pay for a smaller server and save money. Because on the uh, small data sets, you won't see any advantages of this uh, database. Okay, cool. The, um, uh, I saw here that there's sort of a full text search, and um, is that something that you could potentially use to, to replace like, solar? Or 
in a simplistic way. Uh, for full text, uh, I would prefer to use Solar. Uh, it isn't uh, for full text search. It's more for uh, real time analysis. It's for um, calculation of data, okay. all of these things. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just because I sort of mentioned here. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 it is, but uh, Solar is uh, very well suited for, search, uh, for text searching. So yeah. you need to understand uh, what tools are suited for is better yeah. and use it uh, yeah I mean um, yeah, yeah. It, it's just yeah I'm wondering if, if there's some underlying tech there that, that they're using and it could just okay um, you you wouldn't actually have to spin up the, the solar server you could just you could just leverage what um, uh, whatever they're providing but yeah I'll check it out anyway. okay Any other questions? Yeah, please. You mentioned the, um, the, the driver module and said it's not quite stable yet. Um, but what functionality does it actually provide if it's MySQL compatible? Um, it's, uh, as mentioned on the uh, latest slide, uh, we need to define a shard key or uh, we need to ensure that primary key is used. Uh, there were uh, issues with unique keys, uh, so uh, driver um, leveraged the situation and uh, made uh, to work it possible. Also, there are differences how uh, MemSQL and MySQL works by uh, search by strings. Uh, but actually, uh, MySQL driver extend MySQL driver from the core. Okay. Yeah, but there are still issues. And uh, MySQL uh, provides uh, MySQL module uh, provides uh, integration with Drush. So there are a uh, few differences also. So uh, this model covers all these differences. Yeah. Okay, thank you for participation.